I'm making my own version of the classic toy Rock'em Sock'em Robots, but my version is going to be life-sized. I'm going to use an air compressor to drive pneumatic cylinders like this. I'm also going to include some electronics that will detect the punches and keep track of who's winning. This is the third video in this series, so this is what my plan is. I need to build the second robot, so I've gone ahead and I've printed out all of the same pieces you see here, and I've cut all of the aluminum extrusion that I need to build that second robot. Once I build the blue robot, I need to design a skeletal structure so that I can build out the torso of these robots. And then after that, I think I'm gonna wrap the skeletal structure in a thin layer of ABS plastic. I've got a ton of work to do, so I'm gonna get started. When I built the red robot, I needed to add a little bit more rigidity to the setup. So I designed and prototyped this little gusset piece out of wood, and it worked fine, but I think I wanna make this out of metal. And since I don't have a way to do that here in my shop, I'm going to be using the service Send Cut Send. It was really easy to design this piece and upload it on their website. I made a really cool improvement to this design. I added a little tab here and I had Send Cut Send bend that to a 90 degree angle and that will make this part a lot stronger. Now that I've got these parts in hand, I can remove the wooden piece and put on the aluminum one. Oh shoot, I put these arms on backwards. I was using the red robot as a reference to make sure I had all the parts in the right spot and I put the arms facing the same direction as the red robot. These two robots are meant to have a boxing match, not start a conga line, but I think I can take these two screws off and lift it up and flip it around. There we go, now it's facing the right way. So I struggled to know exactly how far apart these need to be spaced. I know that the chest pieces are probably gonna stick out a little bit and I want the punches to kind of land in the middle of the chest, uh, but I didn't have exact measurements. So I kind of had to guess and I may end up having to shift them a little bit either further apart or a little bit closer together depending on how far that reaches. But I guess I'll cross that bridge when I get there because um, there's no way of knowing at this point. One thing that I noticed while assembling the blue robot's frame is that the shoulders and neck piece, this joint in here, is a little bit flimsy, and it was the same problem on the red one. To fix that, I designed this bracket and ordered it from Send Cut Send, and I installed it on the back of both robots, and that made it way more rigid than it was before, and I think that it's going to hold up to those punches much better than what I had before. The last thing that I need to do to get the blue robot in the same state as the red one is to route all of the pneumatic tubes. There are three pneumatic cylinders and each cylinder gets two tubes. All of those tubes are routed to a central manifold. The central manifold has all of the solenoid valves which controls all of the movements of both robots. I'm so relieved to have both robots in the same state. It's taken a lot to get here. The next thing I need to do is to create the chest piece. And I went back and forth a lot on how I was going to approach this. It's sort of a complex shape. If you look at the original toy, there's a lot of contours here and it's something that I would have to sculpt out of a foam or something, which is way outside of my comfort zone. I'm much more comfortable designing things that have square and predictable geometries. My first thought was to get a big sheet of rigid foam insulation and cut it into layers and stack those on top of each other and sculpt out this shape. But what I ended up doing is designing some skeleton pieces that will go inside and attach to the frame 
and then I'm going to get a sheet of ABS plastic and wrap that on the outside like a skin. If you look at the 3D model here, you'll see that I've designed these flat plates that slide up and down onto that center frame. I used the honeycomb pattern cutout to save weight. If you look closer at these plates, you can see that I have some bent metal tabs. This is how I'm going to attach the flexible ABS sheet to the skeleton pieces. The skeleton pieces have arrived and I'm ready to test fit them onto the frame of the robot. So I can slide this down like this and I'm actually gonna kind of bend it out of the way just to create a little gap. And then it's pretty tight tolerance. It should fit just like that on there. These skeleton pieces don't actually bolt to the frame itself, but they do bolt to each other. And there's such tight tolerance that I think that should be rigid enough. If it turns out that they need to be bolted to the frame, I'll figure out some way to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out some short aluminum extrusion to bolt these skeleton pieces together. So I've got this big sheet of ABS plastic here and the idea was to attach it to the robot and kind of wrap the skin around and cut holes where the neck needs to go. But when I tried that, the results were disastrous. It didn't look right and things weren't wrapping around the right way. And when you look at these, it's pretty obvious why. These skeleton plates are made up of two different sizes. The inner one here is much larger diameter than the outer one. So in order to wrap a piece of skin around, it needs to be sort of a conical shape. So of course, the first thing I did was measure the circumference of the smaller part and then the circumference of the larger part. And I put that into the cone formula to create a flat pattern. And I came up with this. If I wrap this together, it sort of makes a truncated cone. But the problem is that this is not a perfect circle. So this pattern did not work at all. So what I ended up doing was an iterative process. I got some large pieces of paper and started taping them to this shape and cut away the excess. And I slowly refined the pattern over and over from shape after shape until I got something that was pretty close. At that point, I used the pattern to cut a piece out of the ABS sheet and I was surprised at how well it fit. There were some minor adjustments that I needed to make, so I wrote some notes on here and I cut out the final piece. Fortunately, the left and the right hand side are just mirror images of each other, so I can flip the template upside down and cut the other pieces out of the ABS plastic. I used a bandsaw to cut these pieces out and now I've got all four pieces that are ready to attach to the skeleton pieces. The next piece that I need to make is this front breastplate piece and it's kind of got these little ridges that go back and forth kind of like a mountain top and one of the reasons I chose to use ABS plastic is because it's a thermoplastic so theoretically I should be able to heat up this plastic and make it conform to these contours. And to do that, I thought I would just use a heat gun like this. It's got plenty of power to heat up a piece of plastic like this, but I just tried a little test piece and it worked pretty good. So I went ahead and I started on the big piece, but it didn't work as well as I'd hoped. It started to warp a little bit. So I went on YouTube to do a little bit of research and I remember that I had watched a video from David Picciuto on the channel, Make Something. He made a whole video about bending plastic. So I'm gonna use one of the techniques that I learned from that video. I just got back from Walmart and I got a single burner hot plate like this, and I'm going to remove the heating element and straighten it out. A heating element like this solves the problem I had with the heat gun. The heat gun just blasts too much heat and it's not very focused. The heating element on the other hand is going to apply heat just where I need it and not anywhere else. And that's going to be the key to success. It's hard to pick up from where I left off because it's been over a month since the last time I worked on this project. I ran into so many problems trying to bend this plastic using the heating element from the hot plate and it just turned out 
horrible. It doesn't look good. It's not what I was going after. The plastic is kind of wavy. There's a lot of extra bumps in here that I don't really like the look of. So I think I need to recognize when it's time to throw in the towel and move in a different direction. I think this process is really interesting and I think it would work with just like a single bend, but trying to get like a series of bends to line up exactly where they needed to just didn't work out. So at this point, I think I'm gonna backtrack and call this a failure and remove all of the ABS plastic. And I'm gonna design some shell pieces that I can 3D print using my Bamboo Labs printer. I finished 3D printing all of the parts on the Bamboo Labs printer and they look awesome. I can already tell that this is going to turn out way better than the sheets of ABS plastic. The only downside is that this is a lot of surface area to cover, so I had to break them into smaller pieces to fit on the print bed. It took so much trial and error to get to this point, and honestly, it was mostly error, but I think it was worth the effort. I wanna know what you think. Should I have stuck with the sheets of ABS plastic and just painted them red and blue, or do you think it was worth all of that extra effort to get to this result? This is the part of the video where I'm supposed to ask you to like and subscribe, but the reality is it doesn't matter if you like this video or subscribe to my channel. What actually helps me is by watching this recommended video above me. This sends a much stronger signal to the YouTube algorithm that you like what I do. My name is Zach and I look forward to seeing you next time.